armed with the knowledge of Altair and the abilities of Ezio, he holds in his hands the Apple of Eden, and we stand at his side, ready to support him however we can. His name is Desmond Miles. Hi, this is Tim Weaver from CMG, and I'm here with Andy Kelly. How are you doing, Andy? Hello, good. Good, so we're talking about Assassin's Creed 3, probably, aside from COD, the biggest game this year. Yeah. Um, and Andy, I believe a little fairy tells me that you've got some interesting <laughs> and controversial things to say yeah. about it. Yeah, well, I think the controversial thing is is not any of the subject matter in the game or anything. It's the fact that the game isn't as good as we expected. Mm. And I've started off on a low note there. So let's rein that in yeah. and talk about the things that are really good about this game. Because there, there are, are a lot. Yeah, because there are many of them. Um, I've, uh, I've played it for about 40 hours now, uh, which should give you some idea of the scale of it. Mm. Um, so uh, the big thing is that the environments are now the biggest they've ever been. Uh, the main one of which is what you're seeing here, which is the frontier, which is a great big swathe of countryside. Um, set in, you know, the east, uh, the east of America. So, so sort of wedged between New York and Boston. Yeah, so right in the middle of the two main cities. Um, so it is massive. Uh, you can now climb on rocks and trees, which gives the climbing that the series is famed for a bit of a more organic feel. Um, as, the, as the game goes on, you start to see the joins a bit and you know exactly what branches mm. are climbable, which sort of ruins the illusion a little bit. But it is like, it is a beautiful environment. I think it? what um, one of the things you were surprised about while you were playing it was that actually this this area the the, the sort of country you know the the, the swathes of countryside are, are actually there's what we were worried about was there wouldn't be enough to do but actually that's not the case at yeah all. there's there's a lot of it, it feels it feels they've done a really good job at making it feel alive so as you wander about you'll see like red coat patrols going past and there's animals everywhere that you can hunt as part of a quite a bit a big mini game which is a hunting uh, club mm. So you know you can uh, you get points for assa air assassinating a bear and stuff like that. You know, so it's like a there's a whole uh, deep, well not deep, but uh, interesting kind interesting of interesting time you know time yeah. consuming in a good way hunting mechanic to get involved in. And there, there's all the sort of there's lots of mini games as well. Yeah, there's you know you, there's like uh, small mini games we can like play pirates at checkers and uh, mm. various things, but there's like uh, there's Tons of just tons of tiny little missions and little objectives like you could be stopping like red coats from harassing citizens in, in New York, which is under martial law. Mm. And you know, there's they have gone mental with the side content, and there's all the usual feathers and viewpoints and all that. So, if, but you know, the, the meat of the game is still the story, yeah, which is massive. And the game opens with a really surprising little expectation twist that I won't spoil, but it really is. Uh, surprise and uh, some people didn't like the way the game starts. It does take take it took me seven hours to even get the the hood and yeah I was going to ask you about that. Yeah. So it's it's quite a slow slow burn. Yeah, so start. you know you you follow Connor the new hero from literally when he's a kid. You know, mm. uh, so you know when Ezio started when I was a teenager, but here you're starting like way you know to the very start of his life. Um, there's naval battles as well. These naval battles are worth mentioning because. When I saw the video of these at E3, I thought they were just going to be like a sort of stupid mini game, you know, like an arcade type mini game. But they're actually really there's a sort of weird strategy to them where you've got all these massive ships circling each other, and you've got to know that the timing about when to hit full sail and go fast and mm. to get out of the line of fire and, mm. and have to to sort of take a tight turn and get a, an angle on the enemy ship with your cannons. You know, it's, it's, it's like a weird sort of board game. So they're actually quite these, tactical. Yeah, yeah, you've got all these pieces sort of slowly moving around the, the, the beautifully rendered waves, which mm. are amazing. I really like the naval battles. Um, but one of the biggest surprises. What about the cities? How do they compare to the cities of the, yeah. the well, previous that, game? That's the weakest point of the game and of the setting, where, uh, you know, by virtue of the period of history, you know, these, these colonial towns were... And cities were just, you know, were in their, their youth. So there's mm -hmm. no big buildings. You know, the biggest buildings are like church steeples. Um, so the cities don't have the sort of variety or verticality of mm -hmm. Constantinople or Rome. Um, so I think the setting works from a story perspective. It's interesting to see the assassins and the Templars involved in the American Revolution, but the cities really are quite. Uh, they don't have, instill the same sense of awe as the other games. So that's definitely its weakest point, and also uh, in terms of setting. But its weakest point in terms of gameplay. Uh, is the over reliance on super scripted linear missions, where uh, even the slightest uh, deviation from a prescribed path uh, is an instant fail. Mm. 
Right. And if you try and be creative or work at an alternative way of solving an assassination or a mission, you'll be punished for it because you're not following the preset path. Mm. And for a game that claims to be next gen, it is in some ways in terms of tech and size, uh, but the mission design is so old fashioned and so regulated. Yeah, so by the numbers that really is the biggest letdown in the whole game and, and uh some of the missions are some of the worst design missions you know I've played in not just in the series but ever. But then there's also some amazing missions. Um there's some really big battle scenes with literally a thousand men on the battlefield. Mm. Uh this is uh there's some battles take place in the frontier like this one which are quite fun. It's kinda like a mini game where you're uh ordering trips and stuff. You also said there were a lot of missions that that were kind of re re sort of re repeats of of missions yeah. from, from previous assassins. That, that's another problem. The game recycles a lot of uh, Assassin's Creed missions that, like following people, eavesdropping stuff that we've done so many times before, and was it even that good in the first place? Right. So it retreads a lot of ground that the other games have, but doesn't update them in any significant way. And there are a lot of those missions because I know you really and while you were playing it, you really enjoyed the first half of the game. You, yeah. You were. I mean, you were thinking this is this is really good, really yeah. lives up to billing. But second half. You you sort of slowly yeah. started liking it a little less. Is that because those missions are more towards the end of the game? Yeah. Or? It, once the sort of novelty of the setting is worn off, and you just want to get stuck into the missions by about sequence six, which is about halfway, maybe a little more, um, it does really lose its way, and those super scripted missions just become the the norm. So mm -hmm. every mission is like a you know, follow a guy slowly, very slowly through a series of streets, and if he sees you once, uh, it's an instant game over, you know. that We should be able to, in a game like this, you want to adapt to a, a yeah. problem. Like, you know, we've seen in Dishonored. Yeah, I was going to say yeah. about Dishonored, I mean, in a, in a year where we've got a game like Dishonored, where there's yeah. like infinite, well not infinite, but near infinite possibilities yeah. in a level, it does feel like a real step, you know, despite the size and scope of the world, yeah. it does feel like a bit of a step back. Yeah, it gives you this massive world and it sticks you in a tiny corner of it for a mission, you know, and I, an Assassin's game would so suit the Dishonored Deus Ex style of gameplay where if you get caught, you adapt, mm. you use your tools, environment to outsmart the guards and you, you know, but they they just decide in this that if you mess up even the slightest thing, and it's not because it's hard particularly, um, it's just that, you know, the stealth sections being as they are sometimes you'll stumble out of a corner or something and get spotted and it'll just go synchronization field and it'll kick you way back mm. and you're like oh I have to follow that man slowly through the street again and it's just no fun and it's, there's a couple of really great missions that are some of the best in the series I think but they're so few and far between compared to the rest of the, the game that it just, just doesn't work. So quickly tell us about the Desmond stuff because that was quite yeah, yeah you know, obviously we'll have to be, keep it fairly spoiler free but you you fa you well, last time I spoke to you, you were really impressed with that those, those sections. Yeah. Well, Desmond, Desmond is is back, and it's it's the end of the first trilogy, so it does provide some closure for that particular strand of the Assassin's mythology. Um, I, I kind of I like the, the first Desmond mission um, was impressive in that it was something completely different, and I won't spoil that. But there's three, there's sort of three main Desmond missions, and they're all they bring that gameplay to the present day. Mm. So they bring the Assassin's gameplay to the present day. Uh, it's hit and miss again. The mission right. design is still the second Desmond mission, particularly, is still plagued by that uh, mechanical, rigid mission design. Right. So that is really the, the biggest thing holding this game back. Is they've got the, it's sophisticated and free in so many other ways, mm. uh, but then they're just plagued by. It's almost like they spent so much time making the setting and coming up with a story, and because uh, there's so many characters in it, it's a very complex story, you know, full of like 50 guys in tricolor hats that you'll be struggling to remember their names. But it is kind of engaging in the way the assassin stories always are. But they seem to have spent more time on that than actually um, the game and working the on mechanics. Yeah, and making it. You know, we we just need those dynamic missions that really will make this the the, the great assassin's tool set you're given feel. Pa you know, make you feel powerful. Yeah. Like you know, even look at something like uh, <clears throat> Arkham City, where you you know, even in the open world, there'll be a little bit, a uh, little predator type mission where you it will just be seamlessly bending it in the map, yeah. and you can go anywhere. You can you know go up on any rooftop or whatever. And this, it'll mostly say, oh, you've wandered too far away from the objective. Synchronization failed. Like really abruptly, just end. Right. And it'll be a loading break. You know, having to endure a loading break every time the game. Decides you straight. Yeah, decides. Yeah, decides you've failed. You know, it's really 
disappointing. So overall, to, f- to, to finish up, I mean, how do you think this one sits in terms of the Assassin's sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, series? How, where, you know, where does it sit? Two for yeah. you is still the best. Yeah, I think two is still it's one of my favorite games, and I think it's the best Assassin's game. Um, one of the biggest parts of that was that after the first game, which I didn't like, and a lot of people didn't. This was it's, it's you know it's what we in the office talk about has been one of the best sequels mm. ever because to, from one to two they had made such a leap forward and made so many advancements but this is is so similar to the other games um, that it doesn't have that feeling of newness mm. and they did promise this was going to be like a total restart you know for the series uh, but, and while it, it feels more like a sequel than Revelations and Brotherhood did. Um, which felt more like expansions of Ezio's story, which they were, kind of. Um, but it, is, it isn't that massive leap forward for the Assassin series as 2 was from 1. So don't expect, you know, to have uh, a completely new experience. It just still feels like, you know, the, it still uses the groundwork laid in Assassin's 2. 